Now, after the largest manhunt in U.S. history came to a close, the Boston bombing suspect was apprehended, but not read his Miranda rights. Joining us from Las Vegas with more on this is civil liberties expert Ilya Shapiro, editor-in-chief of the Cato Institute's Supreme Court Review. Thanks for taking time to speak with us today, Ilya. My pleasure. Uh, when people first hear that the Miranda rights were not uh, utilized in this case, they, they do raise an eyebrow at it. Um, can you tell us why? Yeah, it, it sounds odd that you would arrest somebody in, in a run-of-the-mill crime or something spectacular like this uh, and not read them the rights that we've all come to be familiar with. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. You have the right to an attorney. If you can't afford one, one will be provided for you. You know, the, the standard thing from cop shows and, and movies going back decades. Uh, but what people don't realize is that uh, you don't have a right to be read those rights. This is just a protection for the, any statements that you make if they haven't, if the police haven't given you your Miranda rights, those statements cannot be used in court to prosecute you, uh, with certain exceptions, and that's also uh, uh, at issue here. Um, uh, the decision uh, clearly was made in, in part that they had enough evidence, or they have enough evidence, uh, apart from needing a confession, so you, you can prosecute someone without obviously having any sort of statement from that uh, suspect, from the defendant. Uh, but also there is a what's called a public safety exception uh, to that uh, Miranda rule uh, that the police can question suspects if there's an ongoing uh, chance of danger to the public, if they say they're inquiring about whether there are other bombs that are planted or an active operation, uh, a sleeper cell or what have you. It's, it's not quite clear what the scope uh, of the uh, law enforcement ability to use that public safety exception, again, for, 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 for future use in court. Uh, but there are certainly, it's, it's not unknown uh, for the police to question someone without giving them their Miranda rights. And, and that being said, Ilya, because of this public safety exemption, which is in, in the works right now, uh, even though this uh, first, su the second suspect here, uh, the younger Shanev, is not able to speak, when he is able to speak, will, can he be questioned? And anything he does say, can that be used in court? Uh, that's right. If he's not given his Miranda rights, he can't be. And in fact, if he's in such a state, I mean, the reports are that he's drifting in and out of consciousness. If he's, uh, whether because of the medicines he's taking or his trauma or what have you, is in such a mental state that he doesn't understand what's going on anyway, then uh, whether he's read his rights or not uh, is immaterial. He has to understand, the, you know, he has to be competent to understand what's, uh, what's going on for those purposes. But as I said, uh, if they're going to prosecute, the, uh, prosecute him in, in civilian court, as is seems to be the case now, uh, he can be convicted without have, making any statements to the police whether he's been read his rights or not. The other part of this too, Ilya, is uh, he hasn't been charged with anything yet. If he's charged, does he have to be Mirandized at that time before the process can go forward? No, I mean, the, when he's charged, typically the arraignment, uh, the first, uh, when you present the defendant uh, after you make the charges uh, in court, that will likely happen either tomorrow or uh, the next possible day when, when he is, his medical condition is, uh, is stabilized. The Miranda rights have nothing to do with the prosecution per se. Again, it simply goes to whether uh, law enforcement or the prosecutors can uh, introduce statements that the suspect uh, makes in court uh, and then uh, 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 the, the, the scope of um, uh, the, the inquiry that the uh, police can make. Ilya, the invocation of the public safety exemption, can it complicate things for prosecutors or make it easier? Absolutely, uh, because there will be a fight in court about whether a particular line of inquiry uh, came within the public safety exception, um, because, again, that's the way that it's been drawn by the Supreme Court. Uh, again, there has to be some sort of continuing imminent threat or, or, or something like that. The, contour, the contours uh, of it are always uh, uh, prosecutors and defense lawyers fight about it, and that's why uh, law enforcement uh, typically errs on the side of uh, using Miranda, uh, reading the Miranda warnings uh, when they can. But again, if the prosecution has no intention or doesn't need to rely on statements from the defendant himself, uh, then they, they, they won't be so concerned about, you know, even if uh, they misuse the public safety exception. Again, the only sanction at that point is not being able to use whatever uh, uh, statements, testimony, confessions uh, they get from, uh, from the defendant. Well, yeah, I want to take this uh, conversation in a different direction for a second because it would boggle my mind. If I were a defense attorney and I was the one that came up on the, on the docket and had, was handed this case to defend this guy, 
how would you do that? What would you do if you were handed this case? Well, again, I've never been a criminal defense attorney or a prosecutor for that matter, so I don't have the practical experience. But what you would do is, uh, again, uh, attack the use of the public safety exception. Uh, you would, uh, uh, first of all, you would determine whether your client is competent to stand trial, whether for reasons of mental health or simply uh, health, whether he's uh, been administered medications that uh, make him unable to perceive what's going on. Uh, you'd probably argue that uh, his brother or, or others uh, in the community had an influence over him, that this wasn't purely uh, you know, his volition that, that uh, he was acting uh, out of. Uh, and uh, once, the, once the shootings happened, once the... Uh, the manhunt was on, he was in a kind of altered state. You kind of play on, try to lessen uh, the degree of culpability that the jury would uh, uh, look into. The reason why I ask you that question is because I, I'm looking at the possibility that when this, if this ever does get into a court, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen with this young man, um, if there's a possibility that he could be declared incompetent or something like that, or they could base what happened uh, on the fact that he was not Mirandized and that this was a public safety exception and that's not applicable here. Uh, if a defense attorney could look at it from that point of view and uh, obviously defend this guy to the full extent. Well, if he's judged in, incapable of, of standing trial uh, or he pleads uh, not guilty by reason of insanity, that's a, a, you know, a separate type of, uh, of claim that, that can be made, um, then you know, he would be uh, institutionalized, uh, not, not in prison, but institutionalized until either he's fit to stand trial or if it's a permanent incapacity, then uh, you know, for potentially the rest of his life uh, uh, that way. Uh, but again, the public safety exemption and, and the Miranda question doesn't go to whether he can be tried or whether he can be convicted. It goes to uh, simply whether the statements that he makes without having been given his rights, uh, read his rights, whether those can be uh, admitted. Well, yeah, I appreciate you clearing up some of this for us. Uh, it's a murky situation, and we're glad to have some clarity on it. Well, hard cases make for, uh, for, for bad law, so it's, uh, huh. yeah, the finer points of this uh, certainly... Uh, are unusual, and, and we're all, you know, keep learning new things about it. So it's, it's very hard to, uh, you know, you have to make sure that you don't jump to conclusions, whatever you, uh, whether you're in the media, the, the law enforcement, or, or simply the viewing public. Absolutely. That's why we look to people like you for clarity. Uh, we'll talk to you down the road. All right. My pleasure. Take care. You too. That was Ilya Shapiro from the Cato Institute.